Hey everyone, Steve here from PC Budget Solutions and I've talked about this, oh god, for months now and I feel really bad because it took a long time to get to where I need to be with this. So first thing hopefully you'll see soon, if you haven't already, is I have an official test system that's not going to change. So now that I have a standardized test bench, it's time to actually do some testing on it. So today, what we have is the best air coolers for $70 or less. Now, these are mostly review sample products that have been sent to me, PC Cooler Scythe, and I also source some stuff from Cooler Master as well. So Noctua, there are a couple around $70 that's not included in here. So keep that in mind if you want to see those reviews. I'm going to have these test results. We'll just add it to that later, right? Now, here's the other thing. There's actually more tested here. So we have the Race Spire with the Mugen 5 with two fans. Do note, I'm using one of the fans from the Ninja 5 on here as well. We have the MA620P dual tower and a PC Kohler. I think it's the GI-D66A. And the best overall Kohler, which is not strictly based off of performance is actually going to land in the hands of one of you. So stay tuned, the giveaway is coming back again, doing another one, but let's take a look and see what we're working with today. So let's talk about the test setup. <clears throat> we're using the Ryzen 5 3600, the MSI B450 uh, Tomahawk motherboard, a 16 gig kit of G-Skill memory at 3600 megahertz, a Be Quiet Silent Base 801 stock configuration fans at maximum speed. We're using EVGA GTX 1080 for the win. We are using a Be Quiet Pure Power 11 600 watt 80 plus cold power supply. And then the coolers obviously vary. And then going forward to the testing methodology. <clears throat> PBO is enabled. Now that's obviously going to cause a little bit of variance here. But we are running, running precision boost overdrive for this particular setup. The fans are normalized, so the case fans are set 100% because they're not loud at all. It's a silent based case. The GPU is running 20% uh, until 30 degrees, and it'll start to ramp up to 50% until at, at 70 degrees, that's a 50%. There's a steep increase, 80 degrees at 80%, and then at 90 per degrees, it's at 100%. CPU is a little bit different. We're going to start off at 40% at 30 degrees. We're going to go 60% at 50 degrees, 80% at 65 degrees, 100% at 80 degrees. So that is across all testing. There is an AIO that I did test here. Uh, that pump was just run at whatever the motherboard wanted it to. So we are running 1080p, and now that we have the testing scenario out of the way and everybody understands what we're working with, let's take a look at some benchmarks and see where we start and where we're going to end. Okay, let's start with Intel burn test. Now, I don't want to sound rooting for any one of these. I mean, most of these, um, even Cooler Master, while they didn't give this to me, they helped me out with some things on it, uh, have been given to me one way or another. So there's definitely no bias. Um, you know, definitely PC Cooler has given me a lot of products, but what I really like about their products thus far is, you know, chi uh, Chinese fans is all you have known me really bad, really loud, not good pressure, just overall garbage. And so far, PC Core products have been solid. I've used them a lot. I use them personally. I use them on 3900X, and it works fantastic. Uh, in this case, though, uh, we are actually first uh, in Intel burn test by, uh, we're looking about one and a half degrees to the Psych Mugen. Uh, and then the Psych Ninja uh, comes about a half a degree lower than that. Another half degree cooler master, and then there's some separation about five degrees to the um, Wraith Prism. Now, let's take a look at Blender. Very similar story, uh, a slight edge to the wind to the PC cooler. The Mugen comes up about 0.7 degrees uh, over ambient, and then both Cooler Master and Ninja are some decent separation behind there. Actually, yeah, so we're about a half a degree, then another half a degree. And then we're, again, roughly five degrees to the Wraith Prism again. Uh, kind of expected. Now, superposition is going to be kind of similar to a gaming test, but it's really GPU bound. Um, so these tests I wouldn't take home or take with a grain of salt, but uh, the Ninja did win in this case, followed by the Mugen. Then we have the uh, PC Cooler and then Cooler Master again. Despite being a dual tower to fan, it's not faring super well, and it's normally... Uh, it can be a found sale, but it's normally a $60 um, product here. 
Uh, and then the wraith prism, um, again, coming up about six, five to six degrees behind that. Now when we take a look at games, World of Warcraft's one, it is, that can really push the CPU relatively far as well. And looking at the PC cooler, we have another win here, 35 degrees over ambient. Um, both sites were really close, about 0.3 degrees away from each other, but there definitely is a degree separation from number one. And then we have Cooler Master, again, I mean, not a big difference from the engine to Cooler Master, but it did, it did squeak out, unfortunately lost. Now we have some actual separation, and there's actually a good reason for that. So uh, now we have the GPU kicking up pretty hard, and the CPU is also doing some work as well. So considering this is taking, you know, air here, and then essentially blowing it back in, it is taking some hot air because it's not getting a lot of direction from the front fans. So that's to be expected. Now when we go to Division 2, it's a little bit of a different story um, because with the Wraith, it's not it's not just CPU balance, so there's not as much separation here, but PC Cooler again is winning, Mugen second, Ninja third, Cooler Master fourth. Now these two are also very close to each other. Um, and I actually have some, some theories here because there's more heat sink and this is a quiet optimized case without a lot of forced airflow um, it really relies on the fans and if the fans can't push a lot of air through the heat sinks due to higher rpm or static pressure they're going to um, not do quite as well and that's definitely the case unless you have a really high airflow case we move um and the wraith prism again loses by about five degrees um ghost recon wildlands very similar story. The difference is, is PC Cooler actually edged out by a decent amount, and then these three came all really close to each other, and then we have about a seven degree delta to the Wraith Prism. So that is not the whole story. Let's look at Cinemench. So the problem with doing precision boost overdrive testing is there's ambient temperature is going to have a little bit to play with it. So these results aren't as dialed in as a controlled environment, full disclosure. But at the same time, what I've found is not everybody's scenario can get to there. So give an idea of, of what to expect. But this kind of paints the story. So the better cooling one, despite the ambient temperature being higher when the PC cooler was, was being done versus the Mugen 5, for example, because I started that this morning was cooler. Uh, tells you that there might be some more separation with the PC cooler. It scored a little bit higher than the Scythe coolers, uh, and they both performed about a 4.1 uh, gigahertz all core clock is what I've observed. Now the Scythe Ninja, however, actually it pulled a little bit lower, but I definitely know consistently around 4,075 megahertz. Uh, same thing with the Cooler Master one as well, and then uh, the Wraith Prism, uh, definitely a big difference. It was fluctuating between 425 and 450, and it scored the lowest of all of them. So that's definitely to be expected. Uh, Temperature-wise, uh, again, PC Kohler wins, Mugen 5 second. These two are actually pretty close to each other compared to the rest. Actually, the, here, here, they're all about actually 0.5 away from each other, and again, a 5 to 6 degree delta there. Now, this, oh God, sorry about this. So what I also did was I took our Champion Cooler versus this guy, uh, Cooler Masters 120 AIO, versus the Wraith Prism, and I also have back here, which my phone's sitting on, the Spire that comes with, it's the cooler that comes with the Ryzen uh, 53600. Obviously, the Champion still wins, but what's interesting is the $60 AIO and this were pretty close to each other. And there's actually a couple reasons for this. The problem with the setup I have is, well, not the problem. I'm not going to put out 120 in the front. That's where it should be, a liquid cooler. It looks stupid. I'm sorry. I'm not benchmarking stupid. Your AIO should generally be intake to bring in cold air. Because if not, then it's going to be pulling in warmer air. And there's going to be anywhere from a 5 to 10 degree delta difference there. Now, I didn't want to change the fan layout for this particular test. If I would have put it in the rear, it may have done a little bit better, but for my testing, the Master Liquid Light 120 didn't really beat the best of the single fan air cores, the Hyper 212, the d Pool Gam Max, etc. So it wouldn't have done well enough to make a difference. I put it in the top. It did have plenty of room to vent towards the top, out the top vents in the rear. May have not been the best, but I didn't really, really want to change the configuration. But regardless, it was not going to touch the PC cooler. Uh, it may have done a little bit better than the Wraith Prism. What this is telling me, though, is even more of an ideal setup, 
I wouldn't get a $60 AIO. And it's proven kind of time again, once the liquid warms up, it doesn't perform as well. So the first 15 minutes might do great, but you gotta let them warm up. Even, I mean, you gotta let them cool down between tests, but once the liquid's at a sustained like temperature, then you're gonna get the real results. Um, now, here's the really big thing. Everybody says, oh, the stock cooler is great. AMD makes great stock coolers. Yes, they are better than Intel's garbage. That's why Intel doesn't even include them in overclock. But the reality of it is, is you have precision boost overdrive, you're overheating. I hit, now we're talking at 28, 29 degree ambient temperature, over 90 degrees in every synthetic. So let's take a look. So Intel burn test, 64 over ambient. Uh, Blender 64 over ambient, Cinebench 64 over ambient. You add 25 degrees that you're in the 90s. Um, let's look at gaming. So World of Warcraft 48 over ambient. You're in the upper 70s, lower 80s, depending on how much ambient temperature you have gaming, and it really shouldn't be on a 65 watt processor. Um, you know, when you compare it to the other results, like for example, the PC Core, since that's kind of the champion here. You go from 48 degrees over ambient to 35. 13 degree difference. That's going to get you an extra 100 to 150 megahertz on top of the fact it's running cooler. Um, so that's really kind of a telltale sign. I don't think a Ryzen 5 3600 should ever be used on a stock cooler for long term, especially if you're doing CPU heavy tasks like Adobe and stuff like that. Get yourself something, uh, whether it's a Hyper 212 or something like what's here. So this last chart's a little bit difficult to kind of follow, and I'll explain. I actually have to look at it so I can explain it to you. So I rated this on a couple things. Gaming and synthetic uh, thermals, value, so total system 1150, which is roughly what a 2070 would cost in a system since 1080s aren't being made anymore, and per similar performance. Uh, the installation inside of a case, so actually having to install it after the fact which it's not really recommended for some of these. These two got a three out of five, and that was extremely generous. And the only reason why I gave a three out of five is because I, it was possible, but it was very hard. More so take, taking them out was actually the difficult part inside the case. I ended up having to remove the motherboard both times. But if you have VRMs that aren't crap, or the cooling, if you have basically very small VRM cooling, there, it's not bad. Even out of the case, it's quite easy to see my unboxing installation. But man, with a Tomahawk board, trying to take these things out to swap inside a case, it was a one out, of, 1 out of 5 at best. But I gave him a 3 because you really shouldn't install in a case. But um, the Scythe ones were fantastic. I think I gave him like 4.5. Very easy. I just took a little trickery, but I felt it was pretty easy. Then obviously the, the stock mounting of the Wraith Prism um, was the easiest. But I'm not giving away the PC cooler. I fan. Not because I don't want to, no, it's, it's nothing to do with that. It's, um, I, I'd love to ship to somebody. But the total experience goes to Scythe. Because part of the whole process you have to consider is your time, effort, frustration, etc. Is, so this scored from a gaming standpoint, I mean it was close with two fans. Um, it was within five and ten points or point points or whatever of the PC cooler. So I performed very well with the second fan. I'll try to get you the second fan as well. But when I, when I send this to somebody, I really want to say, hey, um, you know, this is, I'm sending you what I recommend. M number one recommendation, number two, number three, number four, don't buy a Wraith uh, Prism. Not, I'm saying don't go out and buy one independently. You can buy one off eBay for 40 bucks. It's just not worth it. If it comes with your cooler, get it for free, great, but don't, don't go out and buy a Wraith Prism. Use it only if it comes with it. The problem with the Ninja and, and why it actually doesn't get recommended over the Cooler Master is while it's easy, eh, wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll do that. These two are kind of tied for three because installation's easy, but if you have tall VRMs, this won't clear very well. You have to move the fan up, you lose efficiency. This one just didn't do that well, and it's a really pain to take out. So you're going to get my, my recommended um, cooler from the whole showdown. In order to get it, you have to be subscribed, like the video, and you have to leave in the comment section either your current specs or the computer you're currently building or planning what those specs are going to be. 
one entry per person. I will do the drawing early September, probably the first or the second, and it starts now from when this video is uploaded and it runs until August 31st. So if you like the video, hit that like button. If you dislike, hit the dislike button. Leave a comment in order to enter the giveaway. Get subscribed, and that's it. I want to give a really big shout out to PC Cooler and Scythe and even Cooler Master for helping me out as well uh, for getting this together. Uh, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I'll see you all later on down the road.